Hi guys and welcome to RC Shim. This will be another review today of the 4M X1 cam. Geekbuying.com sent me this for review, so thanks for sponsoring this. This new concept of a head wearable cam. In this case it's not some cam that you would use for flying with quadcopters, but you can film stuff from your point of view. So let's take a quick look in the box. Get it nice and soft back to carry the cam. This is what the cam looks. And this was the first rather disappointing <laughs> thing about this uh, sponsored cam. They sent me the pink version, I guess. It's fine. Yeah. You also get a headband. The way you wear it, you have this rubber, this elastic band with Velcro. And you stick it in here. So you can wash this because this will be in contact with your forehead. And will get all your sweat. So you can wash the rubber band and you know, it has a rubber inside to make wearing more comfortable and it's yeah it's a uni size so if you have a really large head it might be a problem uh, but yeah the, the pressure is okay what else is in the box it's just a few chinese written Warranty cards and a really small, also Chinese written uh, getting started guide. You don't need this. Uh, could be that there was also a USB cable. I'm not sure at the moment, but you have tons of them normally. Okay, so this is the embarrassing moment where I wear a pink headcam but it, it's uh, nice and comfortable to wear and you will notice this that the lens is pointing slightly downwards so my main idea for this cam is that I give it to my uh, line of sight flying friends on the airfield so we will establish this as the crash cam on the field and I'm sure we will have to paint it in some camouflage colors uh, so I have the boys to wear it because <laughs> pink and so. Um, and maybe we will, uh, we will make marks for each crash that has been recorded with this cam. So, so this will gonna be a cult device to wear and we will see how long the battery lasts. I did one test where I filmed continuously about 50 minutes uh, and the battery wasn't nearly uh, discharged. So I read somewhere they, they say about 180 minutes, which would be three hours, but I'm a bit skeptic. So I think two hours could, could be uh, realistic. Uh, of course, if you don't use the Wi-Fi. So let's let's talk about the specs of this thing. Uh, it's 1080p 30 frames. So I would say, without having compared it too much uh, quality-wise, that it will be around the GoPro 2-ish camera. It has not a super wide angle. It has uh, 87 degree, which is a plus and a minus. It's if you wear it and film something, it's, it looks about the point of view that you see also with your eyes. So it's a very natural point of view. But one thing I noticed, um, Ali Shan Mao also made a review and, and, other, and also reviews other things with it, like uh, mini quads. And you, at least for me, I get the bit of motion sickness watching these point of view style videos so I'm not so sure if this will work for everyone um, but it could be uh, a cool device if you do reviews and if you solder something and uh, want to be hands-free and film directly stuff in front of you without having a camera set up somewhere 
So for reviews and for close-up filming uh, could be a nice uh, enhancement to your filming. If you film uh, flying line of sight, if you film your own planes in the air, you might want to tilt it a bit more up. Because I found on, on some tests that I rather filmed the ground than the model in the air. So you have to get used to how to set up the angle of this cam. Might even be a good idea to swap it 180 degrees so it is tilted the 10 degree upwards rather than downwards. We will see this how it works. I will let this test my friends and tell you um, in an, maybe in a second video how it worked out. Um, so more to the specs, uh, it has 1100 milliamp uh, battery on one side and the electronics on the other side. It is charged with USB cable, it has Wi-Fi built in and it has the, the buttons nicely accessible here. You have three buttons, one is the power button. Uh, and you have voice feedback, as you've heard. And the voice feedback, um, this is one issue I had starting. Uh, we'll, we'll show you the video now. The cam doesn't like all SD cards and sometimes says... Google Translate didn't recognize the voice feedback, but after some training it understood my Chinese. SD card not recognized. The initial firmware it had just had the Chinese voice feedback, which is not so nice. I mean, it's funny, but it's useless unless you know or understand Chinese. So I had to do a firmware update. I will link you a short description of how to do it. Uh, and once you've updated your firmware, you can then uh, set the language to English. But you have to do this in the Wi-Fi app, which I talk in, in a second. If you short press the power button, you change the modes. You have three modes. Standard mode is video mode. The second mode, mode. is the photo mode. mode. And the third is time lapse mode. Um, on time lapse mode, of course, you can set the time lapse interval in the app from, I'm not sure, one second to 60 seconds uh, between the frames. The standard mode will be used as video mode. Video mode is 1080p 30 or 720p 30, not 60, I guess. You can also enable Wi Fi. Wi Fi direct mode. Wi Fi direct mode. And if you do this, you can then access it. Yeah, you, have, you hear the beep once Wi Fi is activated. Then I connect on my Android or uh, Apple device to the Wi Fi network, which has the name of uh, X1 and then some serial number or something like that. So my Wi-Fi is here, X1, I choose to connect. For initial connect, uh, you need the password, the Wi-Fi password. And that's the only reason why I need the, needed the manual. And the standard Wi-Fi password is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. So it's all the 10 digits in a row. So I'm connected and then I use the 4M app, which I can show you here. Yeah, you can, the first thing you can do with the app is the, maybe the more important thing to do with the app is the live streaming mode, which has about two seconds delay. Also show you my cam. <laughs> uh, of course, you can record or make a photo with the app. Yeah, you have some uh, community features in a gallery. Uh, you, you, now you can see the the stuff already recorded on your cam. You can transfer it over Wi-Fi, but I would suggest you just take out the storage card and use your storage card reader because it's faster. And the more important thing are the settings. What do we have? 
you can turn off the LED indicators if you want to be more stealthy. Auto sync is some community thing where you sync to their cloud storage. Video resolution uh, 720 or 1080. Speaker volume, yeah, I set this to high. And this is the important stuff. Uh, indicate indication language is only to be changed if you have the new firmware on it. Time lapse, you can set how much seconds you want to have between two pictures in time lapse mode. You can format your storage card. You can have it connect to your router and do an auto sync over this feature that may be of interest for some of you. And you see the firmware version. So it's a very basic, basic app. And uh, once it's set up the way you like it, the only thing you will need is the live stream uh, to frame your shot. Once you connected the camera with Wi-Fi to the app, you have to also use the app to... Please operate on the app. Uh, he, he tells it as if you want to record. So I'll turn off Wi-Fi now. Turn off Wi-Fi. Okay. And it's really nice to have this audio feedback in English. Photo mode, time lapse mode, video mode, start recording. You hear that he's starting recording, and then you will see this red blink indicator. Yeah. Now I'm recording everything I see, and as I said, it's uh, focused in front of your face, and it's tilted a bit down. So you have to keep that in mind if you want to frame something. If you go close to some subject, you might want, yeah, you're not sure how to frame it, so you need uh, a phone or a tablet to frame it. Okay, so another press on the button here. Stop and you stop the recording. Uh, the accessibility of the record button is uh, nicely placed here. It's a bigger button, so you, you find it fast. So if we take a closer look now on the bottom, here we have the two buttons and a little plastic cover which has the USB port and the microSD storage card. So the storage card I have to say that it should be class 10. Yeah, if you buy a new one, you, you normally get a class 10 now. And for me Toshiba uh, Xceria worked best. Uh, I use 16 gigabytes. You can use up to 32 gigabytes, but not 64. Keep that in mind. But the files are not that large. You can you can keep recording quite long with 16 or 32 gigabytes the storage card. Um, if the storage card is not suitable for this device, it would tell you bad storage card. Okay, let's take a look at the image quality here. And you see it's quite sharp, the colors are okay. And I would best describe it as a bit older smartphone cam maybe. Not, not sure if this is a fair comparison, but yeah. And here I had the GoPro 3 in slow motion mode with me. And with the GoPro I could shoot the object I wanted to, these two wasps here. With the 4MX1 I pointed it a bit too low. So this is where you need the mobile phone to frame your shot. If you're not used to the angle of the, of the camera. And these are some tests with X1 and GoPro 3. Um, GoPro is in 60 frames mode here which is not too clever for low light. So yeah, you get a general idea of these low sundown shots you can get with the X1. And yes, you maybe saw the turkeys cam here on the right, the Xiaomi Yi, but it will come in another review, the comparison. And you get the comparison of wide angle mode on GoPro 3 here and the bit narrower mode of the, Sha of the X1. Uh, here is one little benefit from this nice carrying case where you enter the cam. 
Uh, it's also the exact dimensions of an iPad. I have the iPad 4 here, which is bigger than the iPad, iPad Air. And to this bag. So yeah, that's a nice benefit for me if you don't use it to store the cam in it. Okay, so thanks for watching the review of this 4M X1 cam. Thanks to Geek Buying for sponsoring this. And let's end this video oh. with some more scenes from this test flying a new cop that I hope I can show and reveal to you soon enough. It's a fast, agile 4S race quad. Okay, so thanks for watching. Bye.